So Jean-Louis, I'm so excited to be here on the stage with you. Um, I mean, what you've done is so, so impressive. And I would like to know, maybe before we start into uh, our subjects, um, why did you decide to become an explorer? Uh, because I like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's a dream. A dream since I was very young. I, I was born in a country somewhere south of France. And, um, you know, when it was windy, snowy, I was thinking about when I was walking in the wind, I was thinking to, to go in expeditions. So, and then I, I did a medical, med medical school, and then I, I've been surgeon. And when I was 27, I decided maybe it's time to do expeditions. And I started to, to be a doctor in expedition. And then that's why you mentioned I've been sailing around the world. As a, I've been climbing Mount Everest. I've been doing for 12 years expeditions. And then I went to the North Pole. You mentioned that. I've been to the North Pole by myself. It was in 86. In 86, we didn't have the GPS. We didn't have the radio. We had nothing. I mean, just uh, the feeling the North Pole is here. Uh, yeah, I found it. <laughs> And I came back with the strength that that's will be my life. And I started to be an organizer of polar expeditions. That, that's great. And I kind of see a pattern in the expeditions you, you, you made. You, you like cold, don't you? If I like cold? If you like cold. No. <laughs> no, it's not possible to like cold. I mean, our body temperature is very high. As so, you know, 37 Celsius. And we have to keep it, so we cannot love cold. I mean, we have to be well dressed and eat a lot of fat. And if you read um, the polar explorations in the past, you all it's always mentioned. I would like some fat. You are you you have the anger of fat, and. Uh, because fat is nine kilos calorie per gram, sugar is four calories per gram, so fat is much more efficient when you are in, in the cold. Even here, here for example, in summer you like salad, fruits, and in winter you like some cassoulet, raclette, raclette, tartiflette, <laughs> All the things very fat. It's normal when it's cold, the body has for fat. That's great. But what I see is that you've been in very cold places, and in particular in polar regions. And today, with global warming, uh, what we start to see is that the polar region is particularly affected. And because you're an expert on those regions, could you yeah. tell us what's happening? I forgot one thing to say. I'm a hero, you know that. Yeah because I face minus 52 Celsius in my tent. Everybody can do it if you want, a lot. Of course, when you travel in the polar region for uh, almost four years, things change, but you don't have to go there to have an idea about what's happened. Of course, the sea ice in the Arctic is freezing. You can see the image from satellite at the end of, uh, at the, end of the summer. And what, what I can say is uh, I cross Antarctica, South Pole. I cross Antarctica with the peninsula, South Pole, and Murray Station, the Russian Murray Station. The early beginning, you walk on an ice platform. You were the ice shelf, Nansen ice shelf, Larsen, Larsen ice shelf. And but this Larsen ice shelf disappear one part in 2000, the other part in 2002. That means we could not do the same traverse. I mean, the first 600 kilometers of ice shelf has disappeared. So the polar region are particularly affected by the climate change, especially the north, the Arctic, because the Arctic changed the color. 
is most of the time white with the, the ice on the, on the ocean and the snow all around Russia, Canada, and all around. Now the snow is coming later and disappear earlier. That means more and more dark, you know, dark catch the sun. And now the permafrost is freezing and uh, there is some houses, for example, up north in Siberia or, or in Canada, they are been built on the permafrost and now you have houses like this moving because the soil is melting. And, and because you're talking about the permafrost, uh, there's also an effect because I understand there's uh, greenhouse gases kept in the permafrost. So when it defreezes, uh, it increases. Yeah, the, 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 the there's an acceleration global. because it, it's uh, more and more CO2, more methane is going in, in the atmosphere as it increasing the greenhouse effect. And do we have an idea of how much uh, greenhouse gases in terms of quantity there is trapped in the permafrost today? Too much. <laughs> I mean, too much. I hope things change before you understand what you, the climate change is not things people can talk about, is a reality. The, the, the temperature, the mean temperature of the planet is in, has increased of one Celsius degree, only one in one century. You can say one is nothing. When your body temperature is increased for 37 normal to 38, that's only one degree. We are not very well, don't feel well. The planet is one degree. You understand two degrees, 39. In the same proportion, our body, somebody, for example, the weight is 60 kilo. There is a lot of people here with the weight is 60 kilo. You are 50 kilo of water. To increase 50 kilos or 50 liter of water of one degree takes a lot of energy. It's the same thing with the planet. So we, got, we call that a chronic fever. And what everything is chronic, we say, we have to do something. We have to do something. Now with the time, it's urgent to do something. And what about so solutions? Do we know how we can trap back uh, CO2? No, uh, we uh, don't have a vacuum, uh, an aspirateur. <laughs> That's correct. Vacuum something. CO2 vacuum. Yeah. <laughs> no, we don't. We don't. The only nature can do that. What we can do ourselves is to stop the emission of CO2, limiting the fossil fuel. And on the other side, you have to increase how the nature is, is the ability of the nature to catch the CO2. Only the green, the green, I mean, the, when I say the green is chlorophyll, chlorophyll, can catch the CO2. Nature, only nature, because the nature, the grass, the trees, catch the CO2 in the atmosphere. With the sun, they make their own nutrient like a glucose, and they give us oxygen. Only the grass, the plant, the trees can do that. So that's why it's very important not to cut trees and put more and more trees, trees and grass in order to accelerate the, the la captation, captation of, the, of the CO2. And now back to the ocean. Um, we read that the oceans trap 30% of the, the carbon dioxide. How, how does it work and is it a reality? The, the ocean catch 93%, 93, 93% of the excess of heat. You know, the global, 93% of the global warming is catch by the ocean. That's why we are, the regulation of the uh, water cycle is, is in danger. You know, when you swim, I mean, the water is hot, I mean, and you do soup, you dive a little bit, and whoo, it's cold. The hot water is on top. So you imagine, for example, what's happening in France. Uh, on the Mediterranean Sea, at the end of the summer, the surface of the water is very hot. 
and there is a lot of evaporation. September, October, the wind from the southeast is coming, push the moisture toward the mountains, it goes up, freeze, uh, cold, and whoosh, the rain, and the rain is back, the water is coming back to the Mediterranean Sea. More and more Mediterranean Sea is hot, more and more water are coming back. So you understand why we are modifi the modification of the, uh, of the uh, water cycle is very, very dangerous now because on the other part of the, of the earth, South Africa, uh, uh, South Asia and Australia, there is uh, the sécheresse, how you say that? There are Desertification. Earth. Yeah. Ça va, vous m'entendez? <laughs> is my English okay? Very good, very good. Uh, my question was, <laughs> is there is in, in, the, in the floor people who doesn't understand French? <laughs> there is some? Us, there is some. You, do, you don't understand French, okay. So, um, you, you, you understand French? Yeah, so everybody speak, understand French. That's why we speak English. <laughs> yeah, I don't have choice. Sorry about that. And so to, 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 to come back on, on carbon sinks, um, so you talked about the, the cycle, but also at some point the ocean will trap the CO2. Yeah, yeah, that's the other question. Yes, good. The CO2 in excess in the atmosphere dissolve in the cold water. The cold water is what we call a pit, a sink, carbon sink. The CO2 in excess dissolve in the cold water. That's why you understand the ocean all around Antarctica. Antarctica is the South Pole. Arctic, North Pole. Antarctic, South Pole. And there is a huge ocean who link the water of the Atlantic Ocean, the Indian Ocean, and Pacific Ocean. This huge ocean is cold water, and the cold water catch the CO2. That's why this ocean, the, Oost, the Southern Ocean, plays a key role in climate regulation. And that's a subject of research of your next mission? Yeah, yes. All the uh, scientific communication, they, they end with the same sentence. We need to go there to do long period, long term measurements of how this, of the capability of this ocean to catch the CO2. We talk about the 50 to 50 size faust. We, the roaring 50, les, les 50 hurlants, rugissants. So what kind of vessel can stay there in a safe and stable position? We have designed the polar pod. We have an, uh, please can you send the video of the polar pod. Ça va arriver. This, uh, you, 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 it, you it is, yeah. Okay, this is the polar pod. This is a, a platform. We will live in this small, it's 20 meter high, and uh, there is no engine at all. We will be driven, driven by the current. So we will tag the polar pod until from South Africa to the, the, the current, Antarctic Circumpolar Current. And then we will do that, what we call ballast. To ballast in order to back in the vertical position. It's very, very stable, much stable than a, a regular vessel. We will have a six instead of three, six windmill. We will have, we are self-sufficient. And look at the, the, the people on top of the missile. It's not a missile, but on top. You have an idea about the size. This is what we call AUV. That's, you see the people at the extremity of the, well, you have an idea about the size of this. 80 meter below the sea level, 80, 18 meter below the sea level, and the last of 100 Tons. So it will be stable like this, and we will move with the current around Antarctica. We will, of course, we will do two major measurements. First, as you say, the, how, how the efficiency of this Southern Ocean um, in terms of as its ability to catch the CO2 from the atmosphere to the ocean. 
we will do it permanently for two years. It will take two years to circle around Antarctica. It will be three sailors on board, four engineers, scientific engineer, and somebody else, me, sometime. And uh, we will price, replace the crew every two months. So first of all, the exchange of atmosphere and ocean. And secondly, interesting, at 80 meters below the sea level, it's calm. We don't have any engine, any generator. It's very calm. And we will put there hydrophone. Hydrophone, that means we will catch the sound of the old species. And we will do a census of marine life by acoustic. Oh, this is a sea elephant. If there is so many we will catch, we could be able to do the census of all the species, blue whales, orcas, and everything. Those are the two major topics for scientists. There is so far 12 countries involved in this project. There is 42 institutions. And uh, the, the speaker before me talked about billions of dollars. I was very impressed. With the one-tenth of what he's speaking about, I can pay for this one. So <laughs> most of my energy now is running, it's rising money, but it's a part of the, of, the, of the work of the explorer. The explorer, they always have been working hard to find the money to do expedition. And for an example, Magellan, Magellan is how we say it in English, Magellan? Magellan. You understand. You understand Magellan. Uh, it took seven years in Magellan to find the money to do the first trip around the world. And he changed the nationality. He was Portuguese and he changed to Spanish in order to get the money from Spain to the first. So always people have, have explore is a part of the job to raise money. To raise money. So we, we, we talked about the, the ocean absorbing CO2. Uh, maybe very quickly. Uh, could you talk about also how the ocean produces uh, half of the oxygen we breathe? Yes, the, the, there is two, two ways for the ocean to catch the CO2 from the atmosphere. First of all, the CO2 dissolve in the water, especially in the cold water. Secondly, the, the CO2 is catch by the plankton, phytoplankton, is the grass like trees, like grass. I mean, the, the phytoplankton catch the CO2 for making its own nutrient. And so he catch the CO2 with the sun and he give us oxygen. That's why we talk, when we speak about ocean, we say this is the lung of the planets because he catch the CO2 and he give us the, uh, the oxygen. We need oxygen, of course, to live. And you talked about the phytoplankton. We hear also a lot about Posidonia, kelp. Uh, is, the, is it high, the same level of importance to produce oxygen? Uh, all the special with the chlorophyll, they need the chlorophyll. This is a, is the, 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 the cells with the chlorophyll who do the job. There is kelp, I'm not sure they are, they are very so efficient. I don't know. I cannot answer with precisely of this question. OK, thank you. Um, maybe just one last question. Uh, when we discussed, you, you just presented that you were doing, going to uh, study the biodiversity at the, the South Pole, uh, well, in the Australian Ocean. And uh, you were talking about one special animal which has not been uh, pictured so far. Ah, uh, yes. The colossal Kalmar Colossal. Colossal squid. It's, you, it's something nobody has seen it. We know giant, the giant, but nobody knows about the colossal. Only the fishermen catch some pieces of a colossal and analyze it, and genetically they realize that it's not a calmar giant. It's different. And it is a calmar who live in the deep water around Antarctica. So we're going to put a, 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 a fiber, how do you call it? Well, a cable. A cable <laughs> with the camera and the lights, and we're going to try to film the Kalmar Colossal. Colossal Nobody has seen it. There is so many people, young people here. I, I, I finish, okay? Yeah. I have something to say. Please. 
you know, I started at the mechanical school. I don't have the good, uh, I was not good enough to go to the college. I start as a mechanical school, and then I, I did medicine, and then I did surgery, and then I did expedition. One thing is important, if you have a dream or an idea, something inside you. I mean, this is very important. Very important. Persevere. That's the only thing I can tell you. After medicine, one remember, I went to the, uh, the Jussieu University here in Paris, I said, maybe I'm going to do a DEA, a DEA, DEA of uh, oceanography. The teacher arrived, we were 30 students, and he said, you know, you have chosen the oceanography. Is there is any perspective for you? First listen, don't listen. Do your capital is what you are here. But it demands a lot of perseverance. And, uh, Sometimes it's important to put the dream on the surface, always. Don't forget that. Because you have a dream, many people say it's too complicated, it's not the future for that. That's your story, much more important than everything. But that means you have to work and persevere, give it time. Nothing great is easy, accessible. To persevere, this is my lesson first, lesson one. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jean-Louis.